story was started in 1981. It was really a group of friends. That, uh, my uh, friend, my med club buddy, Bill Selling, came to me and said, I have a small space that I fixed up to be a gallery. Do you know any artists? Said, yeah, I know a few. And the thing that was unique about the Fun Gallery is we were the first gallery to give graffiti artists one-man shows. We were not strictly, we were not strictly a graffiti gallery. We never were. Would you, would you consider graffiti a mainstream art or mainstream culture? Yeah, it is. Well, I don't understand what's the difference between mainstream. I mean, just like the gallery, I never wanted to be considered an alternative. VIP room of the Mud Club. He was homeless, and I just was teasing him about his weird hairdo. And later on, at Diego Cortez's PS1 show, I found out he was a brilliant artist. We were thrilled to have John Michel Basquiat show with us in the November of 1982. This picture, St. Joe Louis surrounded by snakes, was in the original storefront window, and I'm very, very grateful to the Brandt Foundation for allowing us to have this piece in the show. I want to thank Jeffrey Deitch for giving us all this wonderful opportunity to present this show, Art in the Streets. I've known Jeffrey for 30 years. He was an early supporter of the Fun Gallery. And actually in 1982, when we were standing in the Fun Gallery with the John michel Basquiat show, Jeffrey said to me, you know, Patty, one day there will be a recreation of this in a museum. I just didn't know it was going to be his museum. This is the Fun Gallery Original Crew Room. These are the artists that had one-man shows at the Fun Gallery. This is a gorgeous Futura painting from 1982. Futura actually started the Fun Gallery with an earlier party we had in my apartment, the Art of Opening and Barbecue. This is a, a sculpture by the artist Kylie Jenkins. This is a, a recreation of an actual interior of a New York subway car. This uh, piece Kylie brought with the blank insides to the famous Beyond Word show that Keith Caring, Vampire Freddy, and Futura curated on the top of the Met Club, which was basically downtown's introduction to the hip hop scene. Africa Bambata was the DJ. And these are actual tags. This is another sculpture by Kylie Jenkins, portrait of the artist as a young jerk. Kylie grew up on the Upper West Side with Futura and this next artist, Zephyr. They formed the Zoo York crew. This is a beautiful Zephyr, the end of an era. They're referring to the, the, when the gallery, the artwork was moving into the galleries, coming off the trains. This is an outstanding um, painting by Fred Brathway, found by Freddie. It's part of his Fresh Fruit exhibition. This is the return of God to Africa. This painting is 1983. The day that I started the Fun Gallery was the day I met Fab by Freddie, because Fab would be making down my lawn and gave me all my knowledge. This is a work on cowhide by Keith Heron. I met Keith Herring on the street in the East Village in 1980. He came up to me and asked me if he could take my picture. We became very good friends. These are two outstanding paintings by the artist Donnie White. Again, a very influential painter on the trade. This is a painting by Lee Guinness, probably the greatest graffiti writer of all time. Lee was famous for his 10-car subway trade when he painted 10 whole cars, top to bottom, in one night, and they rolled out. This is a um, beautiful painting. It's actually on sheet metal. It's from 1982. As I was saying, Keith was pretty good at putting together these one-night shows. So one night we did the black-white uh, show in the basement of Club 57. I wanted to participate in the show, so I went to 14. Street and I bought this t-shirt dress and I put this flashy day glow paint on it and when I walked in the door it was tagged by everybody. John Michelle Bosquiat, Keith Hearing, Fab Five, Donnie, Zephyr, Lee, all the boys. 
These are um, paintings by Kenny Sharp. Kenny was the artist that made the fun gallery. When we were starting out, it was going to be an artist gallery as opposed to the Soho business type gallery. So anybody could do whatever they wanted with the space, and we were going to have each artist name the gallery. Kenny named it the fun gallery, and it was so stupid that we just let it stick. And these are um, from his series, this is from his second show. They were hung with this tencel in the original installation in the Fun Gallery, his second show in 1982. This is the famous Fun Gallery refrigerator. My partner, Bill, and I decided we need to have fit refrigerators, so we bought this old refrigerator, and of course, the Fun Gallery was a clubhouse, and everyone hung out there all day, every day. And uh, as soon as we put the refrigerator up, it was covered like this in about 20 minutes. This tag right here in the center was Fab Five. He started it. This is the Keith Haring poster for Keith's show at the Fun Gallery. He printed 1,000 of these posters to be given away at his show. And he would be there every day signing them and meeting his fans. These are some of the famous Fun Gallery invitations and ads. Each artist got to design their own ad and work with the space. The uh, art form ads right here were quite revolutionary at the time for this dumpy little gallery that was only open from 3 to 6 on Sunday afternoons to start advertising an art form. This is another um, gorgeous Futura painting. It's on a refrigerator door. Um, again, there was no set rules about what you could paint on or what you could paint. So a lot of the things are are found objects. This is um, the one woman artist who showed at the Fun Gallery, Jane Dixon. She's married to Charlie Ahern, who's the director of Wild Style. She and Charlie lived in Times Square, so her show were all these paintings influenced by the neon from Times Square. And that's actually a portrait of Fab Five. And there's a beautiful piece here. It's a collaboration with a number of artists, Futura, John Michel, Kenny, Keith Hearing. Something that I really noticed about when I was putting this show together that the, um, there's a lot of collaborative works from the major artists of the time, which you don't really find in any other period that I know of. Uh, 
he would just go and take his red can of paint and just scribble over artwork, which pretty much never happened because I didn't live too long if that happened. But he just chose to, to do that. And he actually uh, burned cat paint is what this came to be called. Very, very sweet painting by a young artist who also is no longer with us. Bear 157. I always refer to these as my like as the uh, Wizard of Oz school. It's kind of sacred. Um, there was a, there are a number of paintings in this style that you'll see, and you see the beautiful sunset, sort of like coming out of the ghetto and heading up into the beautiful sunset horizon. Often it would be their goal would be to get to Manhattan to fulfill their dreams. This is a terrific painting by the artist Delta. absolutely perfect tan Cadillac. So we all get in it for the test ride and then Kenny decides it's going to drive and immediately smashes the stuff in it. So I thought the guy was going to die. So Kenny bought the car, but as you can see it turned out to be wrong. This is Keith Herring's Buick Special, the special pig. watch all the trains come by. Again, this is a, a very interesting contemporary piece by Fred Rathway, Fab Five, incorporating his wild style motifs. His Fred was the creator of the show Yo! MTV Raps. Yes. 
installations, the competition really started heating up when all the guys were here. And this was a great amount of energy, makes a real immediacy to the exhibit, and makes the exhibit unique. This is a terrific collection, all from um, the artist and one of my good friends, Martin Wong, who's no longer with us. He left his collection to the Museum of the City of New York. These are all the black books that the artist would carry around to trade sketches, sketch their ideas. This is one of my favorite parts of the installation, Martin Wong's personal address book where you see Keith's number, Andy Warhol's number, and my phone number. Shepherd Ferret. Something that's very gratifying to myself and my partner Bill Stelling from the Fun Gallery is the artists that have carried on the legacy. We would be honored to include Shepherd in our Fun Gallery show as one of those who kept the flame. The beat goes on. These young artists, beautiful losers, started the East Village. They've again continued that Fun Gallery spirit of adventure.